give me faith, sing it out. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's day. Give me, give me a hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense. So I can face my giants with God. Sing it again, give me faith. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's day. face my giants with confidence. Why? Because I got the Lord on my side. Amen. Praise God. He is the anointed one who is be there for us in everything that we do. No matter what it is, where we go, what happens in our life, He's going to be there for us just like He was for those saints of old. Amen. Praise God. So good to be here tonight. Good to see each one of you here tonight. Thank you for coming in and worshiping with us. For those of you tuning in online tonight, we thank you for being a part of our service. We do always say that we just love and appreciate every one of you, those that come out and join with us and worship with us, and those that are with us online. We thank you for being a part of our service. And I'm going to go to Psalms uh, chapter 18 tonight to open up with... uh, singing about David and singing about how he had confidence and how he could face giants and I love to go to Psalms I just whenever you just want to read something that encourages you you just go to the Psalms and anywhere you turn in there you can read something that encourages you but chapter 18 verse 1 and 2 says it this way I will love thee O Lord my strength he starts right out with saying who God is he's my strength 
You know, we don't have any power on our own. We don't have any strength on our own. We love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. He's everything to me, just like this song we just sang says. He's everything. It doesn't make any difference what's on our mind. doesn't make any difference what's coming against us. doesn't make any difference what trials come in our life. He's going to be there with us. He's going to be our shield and our buckler. He's going to be our high tower. He's going to be there for us. He's going to take care of us in everything all the time. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated for just a few moments, and I'll give you a couple of announcements. We'll go through the prayer requests tonight. Uh, just a reminder that all of our services are online on our website, newbercog.net. Uh, if you want to watch any of our services or go back and look at any that we've had and, you know, re refresh your memory with something that uh, has been said or some service that you really enjoyed, or if you want to just tell somebody that don't go to church anywhere or somebody that's looking for a church, go to newbercog.net and look us up and look at some of our services and see what a great time we have in church and see what a great ministry we have and some good preaching. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's what I always tell them. Hallelujah. Our Men's Fellowship Breakfast is this Saturday, May 14th at 8 a.m. The sign-up sheet for that is at the education booth. All men are welcome to come and join with us. The Royal Elders will be meeting on Friday, May the 20th. The sign-up sheet is at the information table for that. Uh, this is for anyone 50 and older uh, that join up with the Royal Elders and go and enjoy yourself and have a great time with the Royal Elders. Our, pray, our prayers tonight, we need to continue to lift up Felicia Newman. Uh, the baby, Levy Van Duzer, that we're praying for a miracle for the liver. So let's continue to pray. Uh, Roger Register, which is Alice White's brother, still recovering from back surgery. Eva Sharp with cancer. Uh, Billy Garrison in the hospital. This is Laura Duvall's father. Randy Millen, cancer. Uh, Billy Thomas, need to be lifting her up. We continue to lift her up in our prayers. Uh, Bonnie Thomas, which is uh, Terry Thomas's sister in the hospital, be lifting her up. Jason King, Brett Henson's stepson. Uh, let's continue to pray for him. Just lift him up in our prayers when we pray. Sherry Edwards' mother, Linda Henson. George Wilson. The people of Ukraine. All those in the nursing homes, those shut in, and all the lost souls. We know people in our families, people that are friends or ours, people we work with, uh, people we see every day that do not know Christ as Lord and Savior. And it's getting close, brothers and sisters, it's getting close. Things are lining up, and we need to get all of our loved ones in. We need to bring as many people into Christ as possible because whenever he stands in the eastern sky, it's going to be too late then to make a decision. So. We need to make sure we're ready and make sure all of our friends, relatives, working companions, and loved ones are there with us when we stand before Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'd like for you to stand with me tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. As we lift up all of these prayer requests tonight. And if there are any that have a special request that's unspoken, just lift your hand to God. Those of you who are watching with us online, just stand with us and lift your hand to God. He sees that need, and He can meet that need tonight. Let us pray together. Father, we just come to you as always thanking you, praising you. We worship you, Father, for who you are in our life. We thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for being our strong arm. We thank you for being our salvation. We thank you for being our high tower. We thank you for watching out for us and, and coming against the enemy when he comes against us. Father, stepping in the way and being there for us, Father, we thank you for it all tonight. And Father, we lift up every one of these names that we've called out on this prayer list tonight. You know every need and you know the desire in the hearts. And Father, we lift up those hands to you now and for every hand there's a special need. And Father, we come before you just believe it that you're going to reach in those lives and heal and we thank you and we praise you for that tonight now father we pray a special blessing upon our service tonight in everything we do and say father that will be a blessing unto you father and that through your word and through the ministry of your word in this house tonight father that souls will be saved and lives will be changed 
And we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Up a sing, I will exalt you. And I will exalt you. Let every voice magnify him tonight. Surprise tonight. How we exalt you. I will, I will. How we exalt you. Because you are my God. You are my God. Lift your voice.
Hallelujah. Lord, every knee is going to bow before you. Every tongue is going to confess, Jesus, that you are Lord of all. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our heads together tonight. One more time for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless the Lord all oh, my soul. And all that within me, bless his holy name. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you, Lord God of heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let the Holy Ghost have freedom tonight. Surrender to him. Draw nigh to him. Call upon his name. And you will find favor. You will find strength. You will find healing. Lord, we bless you tonight. Lord, we worship you. We seek your holy face. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord all my soul. Bless the Lord all my soul. Lord, bless the Lord all my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives us of all of our iniquities. Who heals us of all of our diseases. You are a great God. You are the almighty God. You are the all-sufficient one. We bless you tonight. We love you tonight. We're thankful tonight. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. Holy Spirit, have freedom tonight. That's our desire. You're the healer, Lord. You're the Savior. You're the Creator. You're the deliverer. Lord, you're all in all in all in all. You're all in all we, Father. We bless you. We bless you tonight. You're the one who breaks the strongholds. You're the one who delivers those who are bound. You're the one who heals those who are sick. You're the one who saves those who are lost. Lord, you're the one who is the lifter of my soul. We bless you. Hallelujah. Worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, worthy, 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 hallelujah, 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 glory to God, glory, 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 hallelujah, 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 we worship you tonight. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we ask you to have freedom in this place. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to minister to each individual. Show us your glory, oh Lord. God, that's what Moses cried. That's what we pray as well. Show us your glory, Father. Hallelujah. Worthy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, the Bible tells us that we're in his presence. There's fullness of joy. And it tells us whether two or more are gathered in his name. He says, I am right there in their midst. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that tonight, May the 11th, 2022, the Newburgh Church of God, that the Spirit of God has showed up in this place. Church, nothing's too hard for the Lord. Mm. I believe we step to a place tonight where people are hungry for the Lord. Hungry. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Aren't you, aren't you glad he showed up tonight? Amen. Amen. Let's give God a little praise one more time. Amen. Amen. Sister Angela, praise team, musicians, thank you. For surrendering to the Lord. Amen. This is God, God to praise for our, our praise team. Amen. 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 Grab your Bibles tonight. Turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Tonight we're going to be looking at integrity. I know that's not something you're going to find in a, in a department store. At least they're not going to be able to sell it. Integrity. No, church, it's 
probably not a very popular commodity in our world today, but it is with God. And God's looking for people who have character, people who are honest, people who walk with Jesus, people who say yes to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I know many of you probably can quote that scripture. Thank you, Sister Jen, for putting it on the screen for us tonight. Paul the Apostle says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now listen to what he says now. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. How does he want us to bring it? Number one, living. Number two, holy. And number three, as an acceptable, uh, reasonable sacrifice, acceptable sacrifice to God. God's looking for people who are holy. People who are surrendered to him. Let's bow our heads for prayer tonight. Spirit of the living God, we, we love you. We've gathered in this house tonight. Lord, we come to spend time with you. We've come, Father, to hear your voice. We've come, Father, to be in your presence. We want you to know that we love you. We're so thankful that you have been here tonight. Oh, thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you know our every need before we even ask. Thank you for the worship that has taken place here. Thank you for those who are at home that are sincerely seeking your face right there. And I'm asking that you will tonight show them your glory, that you would touch their lives. And I pray that you would help me as I deliver the word of God, that you help me to speak so with clarity. Lord, I want your people blessed. I want to see people continue to grow in their devotion and their love and their walk with Christ. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you now to have freedom to accomplish and do as you so desire. Tonight, we love you, and we thank you for all that you're going to do in Christ's name. Amen. Look at your neighbor before you're seated and tell them, be a person of integrity. Be a person of integrity. Amen. Then you may be seated. Be a person of integrity. Amen. I want you to love you guys. Thank you so much for loving Jesus and for being here tonight and, and for making church attendance a priority. Because I know it's a lot easier to stay at home watching on television. I know it would be really easy right now to be right at the store or right at the road here at some really nice restaurant. But you've chosen to feed your spirit tonight, and I thank God for that. And I believe that God is going to bless you because of it. Now, a couple weeks ago, we... We celebrated the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Speaking about Easter. And so much happened when Jesus died on that cross. And when he rose from the dead. A lot happened. And see, but God's praying purpose and bringing his son to this world and down on the cross was that you could have a right relationship with him. See, sin has separated us from God. It had broken our relationship, our fellowship with God. But when Jesus said, it is finished, and he took his last breath on that cross, and he, he was suspended between heaven and earth, something happened in the spirit realm that has changed mankind forever. You see, the power of sin was broken when he closed his eyes and shed his blood and said, it is done. The power of sin was broken. Aren't you glad of that tonight? To know that sin shall not have dominion over me. Okay, it doesn't have power over you. And now because of that, your relationship with God has changed. Now we can call him our father. Aren't you glad of that? Now I've got a great dad. I've got a great stepfather. But guess what? I've got a heavenly father that is absolutely amazing. 
He's never made one mistake. He's never sinned not once. He's never treated me in a way that I shouldn't have been treated. He's a loving, heavenly Father who is always there with us. And we have that assurance as children of God now, don't we? Well, as a result of that too, we can now come boldly before His presence and pray. And because He's our heavenly Father, we can ask Him anything we want to ask Him. And because He loves us, He's not going to turn His back on us and say, oh, you know what, you're just not good enough right now. No. We'll never hear that from God the Father, will we? We have the assurance that our names are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that when we take our last breath here on earth, that we're going to wake up in heaven and we're going to see Jesus. And we're going to be in a place where there's no sin, where there's no shame, where there's no sickness or disease. Well, there are no broken promises in heaven. Everything is perfect. And when we leave this earth, we're going to fall. We're going to be found in that wonderful, wonderful place. So when Jesus died, the issue of sin was addressed. Not all, no longer are we under the power of sin. And no longer are we under the penalty of sin. But now we're under the grace of God. And we're empowered by the Spirit of God that we can live a life that's pleasing to the Father. So our goal every day, therefore, should become, become more and more like Jesus. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that your goal today? Is your goal every day you wake up, I want to be more and more like Jesus? That's my goal, church. I want to be more like Jesus every single day I live. I don't want no longer to walk as I used to walk. I want to become more like Jesus. Well, let me say this here. If you're going to become more like Jesus, it's going to require something that's called intentionality. Which means I must make a decision, and I must stick with it every day, that I'm going to make the, that I'm going to make the choices, and I'm going to do things, and I'm going to control my mind so I don't walk outside of God's will. See, spiritual growth, church, doesn't happen automatically. Okay, you may grow physically automatically, but spiritually, you're not going to grow automatically. To grow, you have to intentionally do certain things. Is that, can I get amen out of that? If you want to grow, you must read your Bible every day. Okay? God didn't give you this book just to bring to church. He didn't give you this book just so you can sit on a, a desk and let it collect dust. God gave you the book to read. So if you're going to grow as a Christian, as a child of God, you must intentionally get in the Word. Another thing we must do, we must intentionally pray and talk to the Father. Spend some time with Him and ask Him, Lord, now you know me. Now is there anything in my life that I need to clean up? Are there any areas of my life that I need to address? You know, some people don't want to pray because they're afraid of what God may say to them when they pray. I heard a couple last, but I didn't hear any means of that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Him. Because you know what, church? It doesn't matter how much He deals with you if you don't surrender. So we must intentionally not only listen to the Holy Spirit, what He's saying to us, but we must say yes to Him by surrendering to His direction and His guidance. See, church, although God's plan for you is to go to heaven, that's not the only reason he saved you. He saved you so you would be an ambassador for Christ. Now, I'm not sure if you know what an ambassador is, but an ambassador is the highest representative of one nation to another nation. So when God saved you, you became an ambassador for Christ. And what that means is that when people see you, they see God's highest representative here on earth. And every time you speak, every time you act, every time you do something, you, what kind of perception do they have of God? You know what that would make you do? That really would make you look at yourself daily and ask God, what can I do to become more like Jesus? Growing and spiritual maturity. The problem with some people is they get saved and they get satisfied. And what I mean by that, yeah, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My sins are forgiven. 
I'm good. Yeah, you're good, but you're not done. But let me ask you a question. How many like to turn the stove on, and some people might like it anyway, turn the stove on, put your frying pan down there, put a the steak in, and take it right back after touching the frying pan? It touched the heat, but it wasn't cooked. We got a lot of people today who've been touched, but they've been changed. Christ didn't come just to touch you. It came to change you. It came to make you more and more like Jesus. See, God does want us to grow, and God expects us to grow. And I believe that one of the scriptures that really teaches that spiritual growth is the plan of God and desire of God is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-9. through 9. Now, I want you to listen to this because this scripture has really fascinated me for a long time. Peter said, give all diligence, which means... Pay special attention. Pay attention to what you're doing. Give it all diligence. Listen, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. So I want you to hear, I've got seven things here. Peter tells us seven things that we needed to grow in. And he says, it, start, it all starts with faith. How many knows you can't be saved without faith? Hebrews 11, 6 says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? So it starts with faith. We say by faith. But Peter says you can't stop with just having faith. He needs, said you need to add to that faith. And he tells us, Seven things we need to add to our faith. And the first thing he says we need to add to our faith is virtue. Then he says we need to add knowledge to virtue. Then he said we need to add self-control to knowledge. Then he said that we need to add perseverance to self-control. Then we need to add godliness, which is not a very popular word today outside of the church, to perseverance. Then brotherly, brotherly kindness to godliness and finally, he says, to add love to brotherly kindness. Now, I want you to hear what he says right after that. After he says, add those seven things to faith, listen to what he says. Verse 8 of 2 Peter 1. For if these things are yours and the bound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listen to verse 9. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even the blindness, and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his old ways. So what he's telling us is here, don't be satisfied where you're at. He said, he said the reason some people are, are not growing is because they've forgotten where they come from. Let me ask you a question. Have you forgotten where you come from? Do you remember where God has brought you from? Do you remember the stuff you were involved in before you got born again? Church, I have not forgotten that, and I am not going back to that. But if I'm not going to go back, I've got to find a tool or something to help me continue to grow. And Peter says, add to your faith virtue. Church, don't be satisfied with your at. Well, this lesson focuses on the importance of integrity. And two of the men who are highlighted as having excelled in integrity, and no one is David, and we know who David is. The Bible clearly says, and God says it, that David was a man after God's own heart. Well, the second man in this script, this actual lesson, highlights is a man by the name of Job. And I love what God says about Job. And when God says about something about you, you better take heart to it. So listen to what God said about Job. He says, there's none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil so i'm going to ask you a question this morning or this night tonight how many knows we need a lot of people like david and like job a man after god's own heart and a man who is blameless and upright in his soul a man who is very serious with god 
See, much of our nation today, instead of pursuing integrity, they're now pursuing everything else in life. And I had come across a few things I thought that I see our world pursuing today. They pursue pleasure more than they do character. And they pursue popularity more than they do purity. And they pursue rights more than they do relationships. And they pursue things more than they do the truth. And they pursue riches more than they do righteousness. Does everybody see that besides me? And we wonder why America is in the shape that she's in. It all starts off by what are we pursuing? Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Sounds like an America, doesn't it? Now look at the child of God. They call us as, as bigots, intolerant. That's their word, the bad guys, because we tell the truth. Liar, liar, parents on fire. See, God has a standard church. And whether people approve of it or not, that does not change God. It won't change Judgment Day. It won't change what, how God looks at America today, or not just America, because it's all around the world. But it ain't going to change God's opinion of things or what God expects out of mankind. Well, one of the wisest men to ever live was King Solomon. And he began his reign as the king of Israel with a very sincere and tender heart towards God. He was so passionate about God that he built a temple, the temple of God in Jerusalem. And I got to look it up. Now, what would it cost if we built that same temple with the same materials, the same dimensions that, that Solomon built? What would it cost to build that temple today? They estimated at one trillion dollars. One trillion dollars. You know what does that tell you about Solomon? Solomon was loving God a lot more than he was loving money. And we got a lot of people today that's more in love with money than they are than when they are with God. And if we know what the Bible says about the love of money, yeah. So. Solomon loved God more than he loved money. So right after he completed the building the temple that he dedicated to God, God came to him in a vision and a dream. Second King, first Kings, I'm sorry, chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. And don't you hear what God told him in this dream? Now, if you walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart, and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. And if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then listen now, verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I promised David your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. So God gave Solomon a wonderful promise that if he walked in integrity, that God would cause his sons, his grandsons, his great-grandsons, his great-great-grandsons, his great-great-great-grandsons, and all and his descendants forevermore to be the kings of Israel. If they walked, if he just walked in integrity. Church, I just wonder what would God do for us, and not only just for us, but for our descendants. Our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren, if we made a decision, I'm going to walk in integrity. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to obey God. My wife might not. My neighbor may not. My coworkers may not. But guess what? I'm going to. Church, I want my children blessed. I want my grandchildren blessed. Can I get an amen to that? And God told Solomon, now listen now, because he has that if in there. If you walk, if, 
you walk before me as your father walked in integrity of heart and uprightness to do according to all that I've commanded you. And if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. Forever. If you walk in integrity. God says it's dependent upon you. I'm giving you a promise, but it's, uh, it's dependent upon you. Church, I'd hate to think that my descendants missed out because I didn't do or I didn't live the way I was supposed to. Church, you know there's a thing called generational curses out there? Where the sins of the father is passed down to the son and to the grandson and the great-grandson. I'm going to pass blessings and heritage down to my family. I'm going to accept that if. See, church, my number one goal in life is to be pleasing to God. My goal is one day to stand before the Father, praise God, to stand before Jesus and hear him say those words. And I believe everybody in here, those who watch online, I believe it's their desire as well. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's something worth living for, isn't it? But let me say this here. I don't live just so I can hear it then. I live to hear it every single day of my life. Because I can tell you this here, God does speak. And when you walk with the Lord, and you do the things that please Him, guess what, church? He will give you a peace that surpasses all the sin as a confirmation. Well done, my good and faithful servant. God rewards righteousness. God rewards integrity. See, church, when you do those things that are pleasing to God, you can expect two things to take place. You expect God to bless you, and you can expect the devil to attack you. Yeah. See, integrity is going to draw God and the devil. It's going to draw God because <laughs> he said, that's my boy, that's my girl right there. That's my boy. They got my heart. The devil sees that. He's going to attack it. And then what he did to Job? See, one day, because Job was living in integrity, the devil approached the throne of God so he could attack Job's character. See, many of us love this story. The devil sent a storm out and killed all ten of Job's children. He sent raiders to plunder Job's all of his possessions. He sent evil men and killed all of Job's uh, servants. He sent a disease that caused Job's body to be covered with boils and excruciating pain. And when Job's wife saw all the pain and grief that he was experiencing, Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, listen to what his wife said to him. Do you still hold your fast to your integrity? Really, Job? Are you really going to be faithful to God through all this? Curse God and die, is what she said. But Job said to her in verse 10, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? And all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Mostly what Job's wife was telling him was, what good did your integrity do for you? You ever heard those words before? You're living for God, what good has it done for you? You're still having problems just like everybody else has. 
What good does it mean do you to live for God? What good does it for you to tell always to tell the truth? Yeah, you got financial problems, you got family problems, you got health issues, you got fire on your job. What good is it done for you to live for God? What Mrs. Joe's problem was, she thinking if you serve God, you won't ever have any problems. Now, listen now. What Miss Joe's problem was is she was living a works gospel. You serve God so you can get stuff out from God. But see, Job didn't have that same theology. See, Job trusted in the goodness of God. See, what Job's wife didn't understand was the value of integrity. See, church, if I'm just going to live right just so I can get gifts from God and bless for God, church, I don't really get understand what value, that what integrity is all about. I don't live for, I don't try to please God and speak the truth because God's going to bless me more. I do it because I love him. Is that what, what I'm talking about? Guess what? This is my wife. I'm going to do good things for her. Not so she'll do good things for me. I'm going to do it because I love her. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm doing it because I love her. And I think sometimes we get God mixed up. We don't always respond to God the way we should. We just want to continue to be like God to be our sugar daddy. <laughs> What can God do for me today? I'll tell you what he done. He done gave his son for you. What else does he really need to do for you, church? See, at church, every time the devil attacks you, it's always for one purpose. It's to turn you away from God. Remember what the devil told God about Job? He told God that if God would remove the hedge away from Job's life and allow the devil to attack him, he said that Job would curse God to his face. But you know what I do, church? I read the Bible, and I don't see where Job ever did that. I don't see where he ever did that. But what I do find is that Job declared a certain commitment to God. Listen to Job 27, verse 5. He said, Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. Although they'll attack Job, as wife told him he needed to curse God and die, and his three best friends blame Job for all his problems, Job was determined to be faithful to God for the rest of his life. See, Job's trials made him that much more determined to be an upright man. Okay? Here's a, here's a thought for you, just for a second. Your storms and your trials will have one or two effects on you. Number one, either going to make you bitter or they're going to make you better. Either normally you become bitter over God and over people for the problems you've been through. Blame God for your problems. Blame others for your problems. Or number two, you'll become better. You become more determined to serve God than ever before. Job was so determined to please God and live a life of integrity that he had a special request. Job 31, verse 6. He said, Let me be weighed in honest scales that God may know my integrity. See, to be weighed on honest scales meant that Job desired for his life to be judged by the truth. Not by comparing himself with somebody else. Or by man's opinions. Job wanted God to judge him based upon God's standard of righteousness. But Job wasn't the only person in the Bible who felt that way. King David wanted the same thing. Listen to what David said in Psalm 7 verse 8. The Lord shall judge his people. 
Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. See, the reason that Job and, and David both desire for God to be the one who judged them because they knew only God was the one who's qualified to be the judge. They knew everybody else had sinned at one time or another. They knew that man's opinions sometimes can be flawed, but not God. They knew that God was a God of integrity. They knew that God was a God of truth. And they knew that God was a God who knew how to judge in a perfect way. Let me tell you, church, what integrity is not. Integrity is not meaning perfection. You know that? If integrity meant perfection, there was only one person in the world who was ever a person of integrity, that being Jesus. Integrity is the opposite of hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is? In the Greek world, the word hypocrite actually describes an actor who would put a mask over his face or her face and pretend to be someone else in that particular drama. And what Paul tells us in the scriptures, he says, don't allow the spirit of hypocrisy to be upon you. What he said is take the mask off. Be the same on the outside as you're on the inside, and be the same on the inside as you're on the outside. Serve God with integrity. If you say you're Christian, then live like it. You know what's killing the church today? Church is hypocrisy. It's people who come to church, people who claim to be Christians, but they don't live like it. Yeah. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and verse 12. Sister Angela, please come. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. God has a standard of living church for his people. It's called holiness. Living a life of integrity has its benefits. And David mentioned one of those in Psalms 25 and verse 21. He said, that integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. See, church, integrity will both protect you and preserve you. And I believe that David is right in the Scripture. You know what I believe David was thinking about? I believe that David was thinking about when he read the book of Job. Now, I want you to picture this here. The devil had gone to the throne of God. He wanted to attack Job. And God said, well, why don't you attack him? And the devil said, because God, you have a hedge about him, about his family, and about everything that he has. He said, I can't attack him. He said, the only way I can attack him is if you remove the hedge. Church, let me tell you what integrity does. Integrity places a hedge about you. It does not stop the devil from attacking you. You know what it does, though? It just means that the attacks won't be as bad as if God removed the hedge. And I'm going to tell you how bad it's going to be. Think about the tribulation period. When the church is gone, and the Holy Ghost is no longer on this earth, and, and the Antichrist has freedom, Church, you're going to see the devil pour out his wrath on this earth. But guess what? He can't do it right now because we're here and God has a hedge about his church. And even though you're going through some bad times, it ain't as bad as it could be. Why? Because God has a hedge about you. Why? Because you are a person of integrity. You are a person who's honest, who loves God, who lives by the truth. Who made the decision, as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Let's please stand tonight. All of popularity in this world today does not involve integrity. God will reward it. And God will bless it. And one day, even though you're going through some sacrifices, you're going through some difficult times because you're a child of God, when you stand before the throne and you look your Savior in the eyes, 
you'll be so thankful for those changes and the commitment you made to him while here on earth. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Lord, tonight I know I was preaching to the choir. I know I was speaking to people who are living the life, who are committed to know you, dedicated to you. I want to thank you for every sacrifice they make. I want to thank you for every time they said no to the flesh and no to the world and no to the devil. I want to thank you for every time they submitted themselves to the will of God. Every time they prayed, every time they fasted, every time they read the scriptures, every time they felt like, every time they, they forgiven people who've hurt them, every time they walked in love. Father, thank you for that. And I'm thankful that you are the God who rewards those who are faithful. And I ask you, the Holy Spirit, to move upon them. Give them the strength to stand strong. God, give them the heart to be a, a people of character, of integrity. God, to walk before you, Lord, with all of our heart. Father, minister to them. Be glorified to them. Show them your favor, I pray. Bless our households, their families, their children, their, their loved ones. May favor continue to come their way because they have honored you. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for loving Jesus. Thank you for being faithful to him. People are watching you. And I pray every time they see you, they may see Jesus. And that because they see Jesus in you, they'll be drawn to God. Pastor Archie. Amen. Praise God. Great message tonight. Great word tonight. Integrity. Christians need to live that life of integrity. Amen. Praise God. A general reminder that we have four ways of giving here at Newburn Church of God. We have our giving basket in the North X. Whether you're coming in or going, you can drop your money in your tithes, your offerings into the basket. You can text to give, 84321. You can mail it in, or you can go online and follow the prompts and give online. We do thank you for your faithfulness given to the kingdom of God. And as we leave tonight, we're going to pray for the gifts that are given and those that give. And we're going to pray God's blessing upon each one of you as you leave this place, that you will be the witness that God has intended for you to be as Christians and will live in the integrity that God has called you to live in as Christians. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you and we praise you for each one who is coming to this place tonight to worship you. Father, we thank you for the gifts that are given into the tithes and offerings into this church. Father, we pray for those gifts that you will use them for the winning of souls, the ministry of your word. And, Father, we pray a special blessing upon the hand that is given. And, Father, that we will be totally blessed for our giving unto you, Father. And, Father, we pray that you just guide and direct our lives as we leave this place tonight. As we go our separate ways, that we will walk in integrity. And to everyone we meet, we will speak a word of encouragement. And that many souls will be saved through our witness. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.